Thanks viewers for tuning in. Today we talk about agritech, a very interesting sector, a sector which is a hot sector among the Indian startups. Amit's slowdown has shown very impressive growth, has seen 9x increase in institutional funding, poised by the government initiatives to back up the future of India growth story. Today we will talk about Vehicle Foods and Products company which is planning to handle 1% of the entire world food by redefining its value chain. It also wants to leverage technology to bring down food wastage to single digit against the industry standard of 18%. I have the honor to host today the CFO of Vehicle Foods and Products, Chinna Parthasarthi. Welcome. And my own colleague and partner, Gaurav Agarwal, who helps a lot of clients transform around some of the unique industry challenges. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Chinna, let me start with you. You are in a sector which is extremely important for the growth of Indian economy. However, the sector, amidst all growth, has also had its own unique challenges. Any reflection on vehicles journey in terms of their growth, in terms of how you are contributing to the future of Indian economy. Sure, thanks, thanks, Shomik. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me here on your show. Thank you. So it was, I think, around 2015 that you know we were closely watching this uh, distress in this ag agri-tech and agrarian space, and also this is as a food supply chain, it mm -hmm. is it is always affected by volatility in the supply chain. You you, you keep on seeing this news about you know farmers dumping milk on the roads or you know dumping tomatoes or XYZ products on the road. On the other hand, you know, immediately after one month or two months, you know, the prices again shooting back, skyrocketing, you know, going out of the reach of common man. So we're just spending a little bit time you know, to understand, you know, what is that, you know, this, this sector is going through. And at the same time, we also looked at, you know, kind of wastages that were there in this space. And then we spent a lot of time on the ground tracking every part of the supply chain category by category, commodity by commodity. It is then we understood that it, fundamentally the way the supply chain is designed has some design flaws. Mm -hmm. So traditionally, this is a space which is led by supply, not by demand. So what happens is the source, in many cases, it is a farmer who produces uh, the product, which is the supply led, and then takes to the market and, and then wonders as to what happens. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the demand is exactly matching or demand is falling short or demand is too much. So it is at that point in time, you know, either the prices shoot up or the product goes to wastage. So the wastage can uh, be anywhere between 18%, as you said, as high as 40-50% also in our studies. So it is then we came up with this idea of, you know, starting vehicle. And initially our hypothesis was that, you know, cold chain was the answer to this. Mm -hmm. But as we spend more time uh, on the ground, especially for India, it is cold chain is not essentially the answer. You need a faster and then more efficient supply chain, which is more demanded. Mm -hmm. And that is how we started Vehicle. The fundamental philosophy and design principles of Vehicle is that it is a design-led supply chain compared to a traditional supply chain, supply chain-led or supply-led uh, food supply chain that we see in this area, which means we. We have cutting edge technology and tools that actually forecast the demand. It is with this forecast of the demand, we give specific demand forecast to the farmers, mm -hmm. starting from cultivation plans to what should be harvested. We call it as harvest plan. So they are exactly cultivating to the demand, exactly harvesting to the demand. So the question of, you know, wastage, because there is excess supply is completely eliminated by design. So against 18% industry standard of wastage, our wastage within vehicles value chain is as low as 2% or so that too during peak summers and it can go as low below 1% during you know favorable seasons like winter. So that is how we have redesigned this supply chain. So with all these interventions what we could achieve is that we've got about 200,000 farmers today on our platform transacting regularly and many a cases you know these farmers have seen improvement in their net realization anywhere between 18% to 30%. So Gaurav let me come to you now. We heard uh, from Chinna 
the way they are transforming the platform, keeping business at the heart of it. Uh, you have been engaged with Waco over the last 12 months or so, helping them drive transformation, finance transformation, which is very, very business-led. My two-fold question to you, one, why was this need felt? Second, what are you helping them to achieve? Thanks, Shamik. So, uh, as Chinna said, I think the need was very obvious. They were growing very rapidly, 2x this year, and I think the history has been always there. Uh, so, I think about 15 months ago, it was, uh, I think the leadership at Vekul, uh, Karthik and Chinna decided that it was the time to look at uh, their internal processes and their internal systems and their internal operating model to see whether those are right for them to scale as they continue to grow. Are they scalable? Are they digital? Are they fit for future? And would they kind of uh, be ready for them as they go into the next wave of growth? So that's really where the need was felt. And 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 as PwC, we've been engaged with Waycool in their journey from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've been their partners of choice. Uh, thanks enough for that. Uh, in the entire uh, journey, so I think about 12 months back, we started this program which we called Project Concord to really look at how do we transform uh, the, the processes for the next level. So that's the first part, uh, Shomik. So, so what we did in uh, Project Concord was to look at key focus areas which were fundamental to the business. So we looked at processes like order to cash, we looked at processes like procure to pay. And I think we also looked at how do we build in capabilities from an organizational and people capability perspective. So that was really the remit. Uh, when we started the project, we looked at three distinct pillars of uh, Project Concord. The first pillar was to look at uh, deep digital design. So we looked at how can we use digital given that uh, Vekul is an agri-tech company, how do we also enable their enabling processes, the support backend, backend processes to be digital uh, first, to be future ready and to scale as the business changes, as they do more orga inorganic growth etc. So that was the first part of the, the first pillar of Project Concord. The second uh, important pillar was what we called as controlled process execution. Mm. Because as you know, you can have the best processes, you can have the best technologies, but if it is not implemented well, if people don't adopt it well, uh, it doesn't really give the benefits. So it, the heart of this whole project was to drive uh, uh, what we call as process execution and implementation. And uh, given that this was finance-led business transformation, it was very important that the ownership of these changes and this transformation was being driven by the business and not by finance. So that's the second part of what we did. The third pillar really was to look at uh, user experience. So intuitive user experience for all stakeholders, so be it their customers, their vendors, their partners, their employees. So how do you really enhance the experience of everybody who's dealing with Waycool in that sense? So those were the three key pillars of uh, Project Concord. Uh, as we got into the project, we identified certain key initiatives which were really at the heart of their business and really to drive uh, business towards the next level of growth. Some of these initiatives which I would kind of talk about would be to say how do we in, uh, enhance the digital payments through from their customers. So reduce the reliance on cash collections and make it make the payments more digital through their customers. The second was to improve the profile of the customers and vendors. So how do we really use technology to get the right vendors, customers and enforce the KYC processes in their vendors. Um, the next component was around looking at uh, the whole beat management, how do we improve the productivity of the sales force which was uh, there at uh, Waycool. Uh, similarly, around uh, the, uh, the aspects around uh, people training because it was very important that we establish Waycool way of working mm. and then to all their employees existing and new, we show that this is the right way of working and going forward, uh, we institutionalize those ways of working so that there is no non-standardized ways of working which are happening. So, so that's really been the journey, Shomik. It's been a great uh, journey over the last 12 uh, months. Uh, what we are doing now as part of Project Concord is to see how do we continue to realize the benefits of the transformations which we've made in the, pro in, in the company and also create a new operating model for the future driven by a center of excellence, which will then form the basis for all their enabling functions to uh, operate in the future uh, as they scale as they grow as they kind of get new companies how do that engine really works really well for them that will be the next level of uh, what we'll do uh, hopefully with uh, what we are doing right now with uh, Vekul. So Chinna just heard from Gaurav about this very exciting project that we are doing with you. If I just want to change the lens onto Vekul 
and ask you, how has this program been received by Vekul? And as the CFO of the organization, how will you see the success of this getting really delivered onto the ground? Sure, thanks, Swamik. I think adding to what Gaurav said, you know, when we uh, initially engaged with Gaurav and then started looking at this overall mandate of Project Concord uh, as it was Christian. So the main intent of Project Concord is very simple. So we wanted to have 100% of the stakeholders or every stakeholder of the company, Vekul, touched digitally by Sensa. So our tax rate. So which means be it whether you are an employee or on the supply side or on the demand side, everyone should be touched by the digital technologies that we have built so that you know the experience is uniform and scalable and you know it is not person dependent. So uh, no matter at what scale you are operating, the user gets the same experience. So I think that's that's one major important uh, mandate with which both the teams started working. And uh, coming to the, the, the how the company has received it, so what happens is when you are uh, uh, evolving at a rapid pace mm -hmm. and the business is growing at a rapid pace mm -hmm. and on top of it you are adding this text feed with one solution after other to actually move one process away from manual interventions to tech processes. It's important that you know the processes that you rolled out through technology are gaining adoption also. Mm -hmm. right? Otherwise as Gaurav said you know there's no point in churning out one after other tech processes but the adoption was somewhere lost in this transition. So that's where you know one major intervention that actually helped us is creation of this control tower where in this control tower is nothing but you know consortium of the business box mm -hmm. is one single point of contact from each of the business or critical function who nominates one one uh, spot into this control tower where they will own saying that you know what these are the three four uh, key uh, digital processes that we need to adopt and track and these are the relevant KPIs that we will be tracking at certain frequencies is it on a daily basis or weekly, fortnightly, monthly and with this what has happened is that the ownership of these tech interventions or uh, the processes that were rolled out has improved significantly businesses could see the benefits of you know uh, uh, having this technology interventions and they are they're able to have a better sense of governance saying that you know sitting here I, I could see you know what is happening in this particular bait you know this customer this salesman this SKU so that kind of business tangible benefits they could see and hence the result of it is that if you look at the the bitline adherence mm -hmm. uh, it used to be around 30 40 percent when we started this journey 12 months ago now it is close to 90 95 percent I would say the significant improvement more than 100 percent improvement and then there's so much more understanding of the importance of the bit plan adherence and what what does this translate is that you know an average salesman productivity mm -hmm. at scale has increased anywhere between 40 percent to 80 percent so the average order sales order in rupee terms per salesman has improved anywhere between 40 to 80 percent that's significant mm -hmm. improvement and benefits that the businesses are able to see and hence that you know this, we call these governance calls. Every month, the control tower actually has, in fact, all the, the, the key operating members actually participate, including me, and discuss, you know, you know what, for this business, these are the key processes wherein uh, you, we are expected to have certain benchmarks. Every KPI is having set KPIs and then a benchmarks, and then where are we with, with respect to the benchmarks? I think, happy to say that, you know, we are, in most of the cases, uh, very close to the benchmarks. At least 60-70% of the KPS we are ahead of the benchmarks. So I think it's, it's only a matter of another few months before we will be in a position to actually see that all the KPS getting into you know better at the benchmarks or better than the benchmarks. So there are certain key risks also in this business. So it's not just the business side. So if you have to look at from key controls and governance, you know, cash like Gaurav said is a key risk. So when we started this journey, so it was pretty much 100% cash, especially in the uh, the retailer side. Today, about 57% of the collections are completely digital. Wow. Now, imagine the impact it has. So, cash is uh, risk. So, how do you how do you actually eliminate this risk? So, a lot of cash is being handled by multiple people, and then you know, deposited, you know, uh, being accounted, reconciled, uh, all this credit management, all these pieces are eliminated to this. So, this is less than 12 months. I think 
uh, in another one quarter or two quarters, we'll be above 80 percent of the base at which we are going. That's a significant benefit. In addition to this, the ones who are not uh, uh, on to cash also, where who are otherwise making digital payments, we have launched virtual account numbers. So where already you know it's hardly one month or two months old solution. Where already you know 30 percent of the customers adopted to this. Again, you know unaccounted or unrealized or unidentified credits of money into the banks is completely eliminated. So these kind of interventions will actually help us in scaling the businesses and business processes uh, with adequate controls. It is very important for us uh, to, to uh, uh, ensure that you know this, this rigor is uh, continued and at the same time you know businesses are also continuing to see the, see the benefits. So on one hand you know uh, Garo also spoke about how, how we are actually trying to standardize the processes that there again uh, uh, specific uh, um, interventions were planned such as you know every employee every stakeholder is actually touched with you know the trainings and you know training modules were created about 750 trainings mm -hmm. so that it's not as you know nobody today can say that you know what maybe some process was launched I didn't know so that was eliminated so all the current set of employees but also this has become a standard program in our l d teams uh, intervention in terms of so as and when a new employee joins in the induction itself this the, the respective role level what all the modules that are relevant for mapped and then the trainings are being deployed so this means that we are not just done it once but we have institutionalized these processes this is very important uh, to ensure that you know the, the uh, as an organization we are building an institution it's not just once in a while you do clean up and after three years again you are at the same pace so these kind of interventions have uh, really really helped us uh, through this program and we are seeing the benefits on the ground. Thanks, thanks uh, Chinna for sharing that and very well articulated. So as we draw to the close of this session, I would say this was a wonderful story of human-led tech enabled transformation to drive business outcomes. Thank you.